In this video, I'm gonna go over how to create a menu in C using a switch statement. And we'll make a menu for an ATM machine that's gonna allow a user to deposit, withdraw, and print their balance. So we'll say here double balance, because we're gonna store a balance for the account. And then we're gonna repeatedly present a menu for the user here. And the menu of options is going to look like this. We'll say printf, we'll say one, deposit, printf, two, withdraw, printf, three, you can print your balance, and then printf, four, you can print balance and quit. And then five will be quit. So the last option is quit. So we'll say printf, five, quit. And then we'll ask the user to enter their choice and we'll store the choice they enter into a variable called choice. So the switch statement can look at that variable. So we'll say int choice is equal to zero, and then we'll ask the user to enter choice. So we'll say enter choice, and we'll store their choice that they enter into that choice variable with scanf percent d and choice. So this basically asks for an integer, stores it into the choice variable there. Then we're gonna use a switch statement to look at the choice. So we're gonna say switch choice. And then we're gonna have a set of cases, and we'll have a case for each one of these options here. So the we'll, first thing we'll say is case one. And this is basically saying like, if choice is one, run this code here, run these statements here. And we'll ask the user for an amount to deposit, and then we'll allow them to deposit that amount. So because we're asking for an amount, we'll have to actually make an amount variable. I'll say like amount is equal to zero, because we need to actually store the amount that they're entering somewhere before we add it to the balance. So first thing we'll do is say printf, enter amount. And then we'll say scanf, and we'll store the amount they enter into the amount variable. And this allows us to store a double. We'll store it in that variable, and then we'll take the amount and we'll add it to the balance. So we'll say balance plus equals amount. And then that's it. At that point, we're done all the work that needs to be done to complete a deposit. So we'll say break here. And when we say break, what happens is with a switch is execution goes down here execution is gonna to go to the end of the switch. And in this case, because it's just sort of the end of the loop, we're just gonna loop around up here to the next iteration of the loop and present the menu again. So let's do the same thing with case two, with a withdraw. A withdraw is basically the identical logic to a deposit though. The only difference with a withdraw is we're gonna be subtracting the amount from the balance because we're withdrawing the money. So we'll say here, case two, and I'm actually just gonna copy this because it's, it's so similar. So I'm gonna say case two, enter amount, and we'll say balance minus equals amount. Now, if you had a very, very complicated menu and you had a lot of work to be done in each individual case, what you might have are functions that you call to carry out the work. So for each case, you might call a function or a few functions to carry out the work, and that would just sort of shorten your switch. So for case three, print the balance, we're just gonna have to print the balance. So we'll say case three, We'll say printf and we'll print out the balance. And I'm going to say here percent dot two f. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to output the balance, but I'm going to only give it two decimal digits of precision, just so that way it's not like some kind of extended amount of zeros after the the dot after the period there, because otherwise it just kind of looks messier. If you look at a typical you know bank account statement, you only get you know, two digits of accuracy because it's it's only that many cents, right? So this new line here, I'll just output a new line. And then we'll do a break after that. So then for our last cases here, we're gonna do something a bit special. For case four, print balance and quit, and case five, quit, I'm gonna use what's called fall through logic to make this easier. So a couple things here, I'm gonna actually say case four, and I'll say printf percent dot two f slash n, output the balance. So we're gonna output the balance again here. Now, in the, in the case of we want to quit after printing our balance, what I could do is this. I could say here like exit zero because we wanna quit after we've printed the balance out. And then for case five, because we just wanna quit, I could say exit zero. But this is a bit of a special situation where you can where we can use what's called fall through logic. So if you don't have a break at the end of your case, what happens is execution just continues and it actually just continues to the statements in the next case until a break is encountered. 
So what we could do here with this case four is instead of saying printf the balance, like print it out and then exit, we could just say this, print out the balance. And what's going to happen because there's no break here to end the case and we're not exiting either, what's going to happen is execution is going to fall through to the statements in the next case. And then here we're going to exit. So in, the, in this situation here with four and five, we're taking advantage of the fact that in the case of option four, we want to do option four's piece of work and then option five's, five's piece of work as well. And so we're just going to print out the balance. Execution is going to fall through to the next case and we exit. So it's just kind of taking advantage of fall through logic that a switch offers us. So now we're pretty much done here. There was only a couple things though. I've actually, I'm using this exit function that comes with a library I'm going to have to include as well called std lib. I'm also using true here. That's a Boolean value. So I'm going to have to include std bool. So let's include a couple libraries here. We'll say include std lib dot h and include std bool dot h. Just that way we have access to those functionalities. Okay, now let's give this a test. So we'll run this here. It says build succeeded. I can deposit, withdraw, print balance, print balance and quit, or I can quit. So we'll try depositing. We'll say deposit 200. Okay, now if I print the balance, we get 200. If I say withdraw and I enter 100 and then I print the balance, we get 100. And if I go to print balance and quit, we print the balance and we quit. I could run it again just to, tech, just to test quitting and I could say deposit 200 and then I could say quit and we'll see that's going to work as well. And so what we have here is a situation where it's actually kind of ideal to use a switch. So oftentimes we don't really need to use a switch because we can just use if statements. If statements can do pretty much the same thing that a switch can do really. But where a switch can be useful is when you have a finite number of options. So we have a finite number of cases here. So if there's some finite number of options that we want to handle, a switch can be useful. Another place where a switch can be useful is when we can actually take advantage of fall through logic in some kind of meaningful way like this. So this is an example of using a switch to implement a menu in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.